I drink champagne when I'm happy and when I'm sad. Otherwise, I don't touch it unless I'm thirsty. Goes the abbreviated version of the quote from Lily Boulanger, which is probably the most famous champagne related statement in the world. I love drinking champagne, even though I don't have Lily's consumption habits and I enjoy exploring the region looking for new and undiscovered gems. However, the vast majority of the region's production is commercialized by the Grand Marc. Those are the champagnes that most of you know and will be able to get in most markets. The Oxford Companion to Wine defines the term Grand Marc as obsolete self-imposed term for some of the major houses or brands of Champagne. The original Syndicat de Grand Marc was founded in 1882 but was disbanded in 1997. The term means literally big brand in French and is still used informally. So today I want to taste the entry-level champagnes of the Grand Marc, the big champagne houses side by side in a blind tasting face-off to see which ones have invested in quality and which ones have invested in marketing. Let's go. Leon has selected these wines, so I don't know which one he picked. They are also kind of yeah obscured, so, so I don't even see the agraf. For some reason, I couldn't find number two, so this is why we have a number seven here, but there are just six champagnes, okay? So let's clean this up so that we can start popping some corks. So we're starting with champagne number one. I'm not looking. Let's pop. Ooh, pretty pale in color, fine bubbles. Looks, looks pretty good so far. On the nose, this is really bright and clean. There's apple and pear flavor, a little bit of brioche yeastiness coming from the maturation on the dead yeast cells. Quite quite delicious. On the pad, this is rich and round, quite grippy as well. There's great structure there. Quite a lot of intensity. This feels like it's based on Pinot Noir more than the other grape varieties, Pinot Meunier and Chardonnay. And it's, it's really good. This obviously doesn't have the structure and intensity that you might get from a vintage champagne or a prestige cuvee, but it's a really good start. I'm going to rate this 89 points. Quite delicious. A little yeah, it just could have a little bit more freshness and vibrancy on the finish. But apart from that, this is definitely good. Have you ever been to a vineyard in Champagne in winter? I have, and I can tell you that the cold wind and rain dry out your skin. And even though you're rewarded with a glass of Champagne at the end of the day, your skin still needs help. And that's what today's sponsor, T. Shanley, is there for. They send a 30-day supply of moisturizers, face scrubs, and lotions to your doorstep. Each box contains instructions on how to use the products, making it super easy to take care of yourself. I've used their products consistently over the last few months, and my skin has improved doing so. This is why T. Shanley has thousands of five-star reviews on their website. You can pause or cancel your subscription anytime and they do free shipping in the US and they also ship outside of the US. And because T. Shanley is sponsoring this video, they are offering you a great deal. Just click on the first link in the description and get 30% off of your first skincare system plus a free gift. On top of that, members get 20% off of all products for life. By the way, both gifts you're choosing from are $20 value, a silicon body scrubber and a nail face grooming kit. Personally, I prefer the nail face grooming kit as it comes in this little case that I can take with me on my travels around the world. So click the first link in the description and head over to Tish Henley. But now let's get back to the champagnes. We're moving on to wine number three because like I told you, two is missing. So I'm again trying not to look. And now, come on. I might lose one or two lights here, but it's worth it. I mean, this is, this is fun. Popping corks, what could be better? This is actually quite a bit darker in color. Again, with fine bubbles, fine mousse. But yeah, it's, it's not as, as bright and clean or as, as light in color as the previous wine, there's a little bit of a bronze tinge. On the nose, it also has a different expression. It smells a little bit of orange zest, a little bit of grapefruit. So, so there's yeah different kinds of citrus fruit flavors. On top of that, there's obviously the brioche character, the slight nuttiness, like roasted hazelnuts. So it's quite, quite interesting. On the palate, this shows quite a bit more structure, more grip, freshness, acidity, 
there's a little bit more going on here. This is definitely not the most classical champagne, but it's a really interesting one. So I'm going to rate this 90 points. Delicious wine, a little bit more edgy. I don't know, I don't think this this is something everyone likes, but, but I, I like it. So next up, we have wine number four. I'm not looking. This is going to go wrong at some point. Did you know that like one of those bottles has two or three or four times the pressure that a car tire has? So this could really knock somebody's eye out. So this again is a little darker in color. There's a fine mousse here, quite a lot of it. It's quite frothy. On the nose, this has quite a lot of lemon and lime character, so it's quite citric. There's obviously also like a brioche yeasty dough kind of character, which is which is quite nice. I think it's actually really complete, quite delicious. There's quite a lot of stuff going on, so the freshness is good. There's a little bit of bitterness there as well a touch of like mature wine, like reserve wine character coming through. So, so yeah, it's quite a complex wine, considering that this is like the entry level of one of the big houses. So I'm going to rate this 91 points. Pretty good. And it's in the lead right now. So we're moving on to wine number five. Come on, no risk. Quite a bit of frothiness, quite a lot of fine bubbles as well. It's relatively pale in color, so this is definitely not, not one of the darker ones. So this is actually, well, it's, it's not in the same league as the previous ones, I think. This is a bit below that. It's actually a bit, well, it doesn't really show a lot of flavor. The flavor it shows is more towards the fruit and less yeastiness kind of pointing to the fact that this might not be, might not have been stored on the lease for a long time. It's a bit more peachy and there's a little bit of apple character coming through. But yeah, it's, it's not as precise as the previous ones. On the palate, it also lacks a little bit of structure. It's kind of fresh and lively. It's not a bad wine, but, but it's, it just doesn't have like grip and multi-dimensional texture it it which is yeah it's a sparkling wine a champagne for sure but but not not a great one so i'm going to rate this 85 points good i'd probably drink it but yeah the other ones were better so here we go wine number six come on what how did i do that that that's that was magic no one has ever done that before that was that was just too much Luckily, I caught it on camera. Catching an exploding bottle or the cork from an exploding bottle in your glass, that's kind of, that's special. But now let's focus on this. So this is actually really golden in color. That's, that's certainly different. That's not, yeah, the other ones were much paler than this. It also has this bruised apple character, a little bit of, yeah, a little bit of soy sauce, yeastiness, but more like a bouillon cube kind of yeastiness. Also like baked goods, but, but also this kind of really savory yeastiness. On the palate, there's great structure there. There's quite a lot of bitterness, quite a bit of grip. I don't think, yeah, this is not for everyone. The previous wine was more of a crowd pleaser and this is more of a thinker, a little bit more complicated maybe, but uh, I, I quite I quite like this. Great finish, really. Pfft. I'm going to rate this 92 points. I think it's quite delicious, but like I said, it's not for, for everyone probably. Last but not least, wine number seven. I still have both of my cameras, which is quite impressive considering that I've been shooting corks around like a crazy person, but let this one fly into into that corner. Let's not risk it. So again, a little bit paler in color, quite a bit of bubbliness, quite a bit of froth. On the nose, this is actually quite grassy, a little bit greenish. Maybe that's due to the work with the lees, the yeast cells, or it's the ripeness of the fruit, but it feels a little bit, yeah, a little, little green. On the palate, this also lacks concentration. There's quite a lot of sharpness there. 
not the creamy texture that you want from champagne. It's more, yeah, a bit, bit rough. I don't know, I, I'm not a big fan. I'm going to rate this 83 points. I actually think this is the worst champagne in the lineup. <sighs> yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend this. If they are all at the same price point, this is probably the, the weakest one. All right, let's go. Let's reveal those babies and see which one which one is which. I'm actually quite excited because we probably know most of those brands if Leon just selected the Cormac, that is. So I'm curious to find out which one was which. Champagne number one was, I, I quite liked it. I rated it at 89 points. I was a bit on the fence there, but, but I thought it was a very solid champagne. Paul Roger, good stuff. Paul Roger Reserve Brut, well done. Champagne number two or three was a little bit better, tiny bit better, quite quite a bit more structured. I, I like that. So let's see what it is. Tetanger or Teitinger, as us Germans, we're calling it Teitinger, but Tetanger Brut Reserve, good stuff. Next up, we have wine number four. Champagne number four, which I liked even more. Four, I liked even more. I rated it 91 points and it was no way. This is the Brut Imperial. That's crazy. That is a bit of a shocker because this is definitely one of the most large scale productions there is. Um, and I did, did like it. The beauty of blind tasting. So let's move on to wine number five. I didn't really enjoy this one, so let's see. Oh, the Yellow Widow. Veuve Clicquot Brut. Yeah, this is probably together with the Moet Brut, Brut Imperial. They are like the biggest productions, even though this is quite a step up from there. But yeah, I thought this was a, just, it lacked depth. So let's move on to wine number six, which was actually my wine of the tasting. I like the fact that it was a quite a bit different and really, Really exciting. And it is the Louis Röderer Collection 242 or Collection 242. I'm actually not surprised because Louis Röderer, they're producing really great wines throughout the whole range. And this certainly isn't an exception. And now I'm curious to find out what wine number seven was. I, j I didn't like it. I, I, I just thought, found it really weird. And it is the Bollinger, Bollinger. <laughs> what the hell? You know, this is fascinating because I would probably say Bollinger is the champagne I enjoy. Also probably because this was the champagne that I drank when I became a master of wine. So, so there's quite a lot of emotions attached to it. Now stripping out the emotions and just tasting it blind. I really didn't enjoy it. But yeah, that's what blind tastings are there for. Funny. So this was fascinating. I love doing these tastings where I taste well-known wines blind because you strip out all of the marketing and the great memories that you have. And just judge the wine based on what you have in your glass. And in this case, it certainly, well, there were some curveballs here. My favorite wine though of the tasting was definitely the Louis Röderer Collection 242 which was just delicious. <laughs> I'm fascinated. I mean, this certainly, I, I wouldn't have expected this one to come in this high, but, but that's life. And I definitely wouldn't have expected this one to perform this poorly. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please like it down here. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. My question of the day is, what is your favorite Grand Marc Champagne? Let me know down below. You can also ridicule me today. I'm, I'm okay with it. So, so ridicule me down below in the comments. I hope I see you guys again very soon. Until then, stay thirsty.